Hey friends, time for another HVAC video. So today I'm gonna to be working on the conduit, getting it plumbed in to the side of the electrical panel. So I've got a little bit to go. Let me go get uh, some tools and I'll be back. Okay, so before I get into this, I gotta rework these screws because they did pull out. Yep, it's running. So I used one and a quarter inch screws and they're just, it's just not long enough. So I went and bought some Tex brand two inch screws and I think these will be long enough. how that oh well and of course it destroyed itself <laughs> enough so now we're done up there all right so if you saw the other videos you know that I'm particular about taking the door off because it's easier than working under it easy thing to do with screws is thread them back in so they don't drop and get lost bottom one is just going to have to come out. I need a screwdriver, so I'll be back. Okay, so we've got a few wires here that we we're going to move out of the way. Let me go get a threaded nipple so I can see how big this is. I think it's the center punch out. Okay, so it is the center knockout. That's good. So we'll go ahead and knock this out. Uh, I need a hammer. I hate GE panels. So instead of the knockout knocking out cleanly, it's taking like the next one with it. I just, this is why I hate GE panels. I don't know why I ever put one in this house. So I'm going to try and repair the outer knockouts. So 
So these are my air conditioning lines, which are off and about to be abandoned anyway, so it doesn't matter if I'm touching them. So the problem here is that this is just not very precisely cut and it's causing the next ring up to come with it. So now I've got to try and push that back in. Man, that pisses me off. Just another day in paradise with GE. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this party started up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue the union on so it'll be dry by the time I get to it. And I'm gonna move the panel cover out from underneath it. So now I need to determine how far down, uh, I guess I did not bring a tape measure with me, so let me go get a tape measure. I need to figure out how far down and then how far over, and then we'll get that installed. So it looks like it is 11 and a quarter. Let me go get a piece that size, I'll be back. seven inches I'll be right back so here is our seven inch piece that's gonna fit perfectly let me get my gloves on and we will get after this the gloves just keep the glue off my hands you don't need gloves but I'm not I'm normally not clean enough that this is an issue. All 
All right. Now, if you were doing water plumbing, the dirt might be an issue. I say might, but for electrical plumbing where we're just really concerned with the conduit staying together to protect the pipe, I don't think it's a big deal. I guess I did not bring the nut, so let me go get that. Magical here. I'm just gonna put this uh, conduit nut on here. Not gonna make it tight yet, because I have one more thing, I'm gonna actually support this conduit here. And to do that, yeah, that's a two by four. So let me go find a two by four to strap to the wall. So I'm going to mount this block here. Hopefully my drill will go through the block. not after a whole lot of weight here. I'm just, I'm literally creating somewhere to put a pipe strap. We're going to get a pipe strap. So I've got this in here and it's okay for this to be unsupported. I need to run a line set cover behind here anyway. So this little block of wood gives me a place 
to fasten this and keep it off the wall by the distance it needs to be. It's pressure treated so it won't run out. I don't feel like going to get a screwdriver to, so I just beat on it and that rattled it out. All right, that's it for this side. We still gotta work on the other side. We gotta get the power and the control where we need them. So that's next. All right, so I was originally gonna relocate this, but honestly, I think it'll be just fine where it's at. It, but I am gonna raise it up so that it doesn't swerve. So I'm gonna raise it up to about here. And that shouldn't be a huge project. So let me go get something to cut this with and I'll be right back. So I think I want it about here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut it. Now it's a little complicated because there's a piece of wire in here, but the wire is gonna go away, so it doesn't really matter. So I think this could work. The reason this wire is going away is it's the wrong size. Um, it calls for shielded wire for the control circuit. So let's see, what does that look like? Can we come off of here and be clear of that? Yeah, that'll work. And again, in an ideal world, we'd bother to get the paint off this, but this is a piece of conduit. It's not really that big of a deal.
Now you want to turn this when you seat it, that'll increase the odds of it being waterproof. And then at this point, we just want to center it and screw it in. Let me go get my drill. Because that is where this is going to go. And we'll bring this down. Yeah, I'll be right back. I got to get a drill. So in order to put these in, I need an extension to get on either side of the box. I don't think I have enough of these bolts. So we'll see what we can get away with. Let me go see if I have any more. All right, so I apparently did buy a box of these, which is good, because I need them. These look uh, quite a bit longer, but hopefully they'll work. There we go. Now we need to drill a couple holes up there, and we'll be done with this conduit. go. So now we're done with that. I've got a couple screws up there that really could be different, but I don't know if it's worth messing with because it's secured. So I'm inclined to just leave it alone. Next, we got to work on the conduit next to it. All right, so I need a piece that's 65 inches long. I don't think I have anything like that, so, but let me go look. All right, so it turns out I did have a 65 inch piece, or a, I actually had one more piece in my scrap pile. So this project is brought to you by Recycling, which is just absolutely awesome because it's the cheapest way to get it done. Stuff that I bought years ago. I 
I ran all one inch conduit everywhere I wanted to have network or video. And this is probably left over from that. And I probably paid about $4 a stick for it. When I went to buy the supplies for this project, one inch pipe is now $15 a stick, which is a lot more expensive. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on securing this. I'm gonna put a clamp here and a clamp here. And I'm gonna leave that alone. I need two more uh, pipe clamps, so let me go get those. All right, so I've got my pipe clamps. I'm gonna move my ladder over just a little bit because it'll give me, it'll mean I have to reach less. Oh, and I should have gotten rid of this, but I can put that in my pocket. I don't need the extension. It's actually a liability when I'm doing close up work like this. Never do what you just saw me do, because it's easy to fall. Oh well, that's not perfect, but it's good enough. All right, so next up, we're going to start gluing this together because this is going to be what and we don't actually want to put that one on. So I need a short connection here. So let me go get that short piece of pipe and I'll be back. All right, so that's where that's gonna go. So let me get my gloves on and then we'll glue that in place. All right, that's good right there. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and secure this with a clamp right there.
Okay, there we go. That's a nice, nice uh, looking spot there. So next what we need to stub off here with another L and this is gonna get us up into the box. I huh. thought I brought two little pieces of pipe out here, but apparently, I don't know what I did with the other one. I swore, oh, there it is. So I'm gonna look and see they are the same length. That's impressive because I did not use anything to measure. Now the little twist you see me doing is to lock in the glue and that makes it more watertight. We've still got one more of these to do. We're gonna do this and we need to put a nipple on here. There we go. Now at this point, I still wanna put a clamp here and here. So let me go get a couple clamps and I'll be right back. So I got you a lot closer this time. It's almost better to think of these as pins because you really don't want to put a whole lot of torque on them. They're really just there to resist movement. Sometimes more than others. And that's why it's super important that you go into brick with these. I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the glue because it's probably still not dry. I think I found one of the illustrious uh, brick ties. So hopefully that'll be enough. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so to prep this box, I'm, I'm not putting another GE disconnect in because they quite frankly sucked. What I'm putting is a non overcurrent protection device disconnect. You might think, well, what the hell is that? I'll show you. It's a breaker, but it won't, it, it's not, it's just a breaker in the a switch in the form of breaker. That's, that's essentially what it is. These are a couple dollars more and it's just a far better unit. And it's much safer. Um, the other kind, it's really easy to get them open and children can get in there and get, get seriously hurt. So this is a little bit better and we're gonna knock out a half inch and a three quarter, which is the center and the, the left. So we need the three quarter first. And, or, 
or I'm sorry, the half inch. And I'm doing this on camera because I want to show you how much cleaner the Square D ones are compared to GE. I was able to precisely knock out just the one I wanted. And that was something that frustrated me earlier with the GE box. I think of GE as the least expensive box on the market and that may be why that box went in there that might have been what was going on at the time is i didn't think it was important to spend the money over there and well now i regret it but whatever it'll i'll look for something to seal up the gap so i can keep the critters and the water out of that box So that should be good enough. Let's see. Actually, I think we need to take it up another notch on both. So let me do that. So I very cleanly broken both of those off as I trip over the cover. Now I should be able to slide this on and it may need a little bit of encouragement. There we go. So it's really tight. So I think what I'm gonna do is back off these screws at the bottom until I get this set. drill bit shot but that's okay those are the last ones I need to drill so let's get this piece back in here that looks pretty good there
All right. So this is not a circuit breaker. This is a switch. It's called a molded case switch. Or it looks like a circuit breaker, but it won't pop. And you could replace it with a circuit breaker because it's the same size and it fits. Uh, you know, I guess maybe, maybe you could put a 45 amp in. I, I, don't, I don't really see the value in it other than, uh, you know, the, the primary thing is you don't have to pull anything. You just flip it and it turns on, turns off. So, um, the next activity is to go ahead and put the cover back on. And I'm only going to finger tighten this. Well, I lied. Just changed my mind. So that's exciting. All the conduit has been run for this project. And next I need to buy and pull the wire. So it's 53 foot from one side to the other. We'll call this 60 inches, six feet down on both sides. That's 12, so that's 65. And then I think no more than another 10, so 75 feet of wire should get us there. So I forgot to put the lock nut on the inside of the conduit. So I'm going to do that right now. This would be easier if I had the drill, but I've already put the drill away. So this is not a big deal, you just, well, okay, this one's gonna be a pain in the ass. I'm gonna need the drill, let me go get it. Normally these are not a big deal to put in. Um, you know what, it's tight enough, it's not gonna get one, because it's not, it won't fit. And that's weird.
So it really isn't supposed to have one inch conduit is what that tells me. All right, well, let me put it back together. I've got the drill, this will go much faster. So the good news is I bought a lot of fittings and I'm going to get to take them back. So I need a few more fittings, but nonetheless, I'm going to get to take a lot of fittings back and I'm fixing to do that next. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video and remember to subscribe, like, and hit that little bell icon so you get the alerts when I publish a new video. Have a great day. And oh, check out the playlists because this whole project has an HVAC playlist and that's how I organize my videos.